Hey everybody, this is Sean Brereton with Auto Enthusiast Network. Uh, I came down today to uh, Mike, Mike Abbott's uh, Steel Rose Metal Company and uh, we're, um, I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing to show uh, how he does bead rolling. He's, uh, he does all sorts of metal fabrication and, uh, and you know, welding work, all that kind of stuff for a lot of different uh, hot rod shops around, the around town and uh, also a hot rod shop himself and one heck of a cool guy. So uh, I thought he'd be a really cool person to show us how to do um, bead rolling. So let's go in and uh, check it out. Hi, we're inside of uh, Steel Rose Metal Company here with Mike Abbott. Uh, these are some of the some of the pieces he's working on right now. You can see the uh, floorboard there, the firewall, and uh, outside the firewall. And this one's been finished a bit, but he's still got some pieces to go. But he does a lot of metal fabrication of, uh, of things like uh, you know, doors and cutting out rust and saving old sheet metal. So. Pretty good stuff so uh as a matter of fact here is mike right now um mike is getting ready to do a uh bead rolling piece uh you're going to do an art piece right mike? yes sir i'm going to do a basic art piece just so we can go over the rough techniques of, of bead rolling um how to make it three-dimensional how to get your line straight um how i do it because everybody's going to do it differently and we're going to go from there well cool well let's uh i'm going to stand over your shoulder and see what we do So what are you uh, what are you going to make here? I believe I'm going to do just a basic anchor piece. Um, okay. I don't know why I lean toward anchor pieces, but I do. He's done a lot of anchor pieces. <laughs> in the so obviously uh, you you clean this piece of metal and stuff beforehand. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And how'd you how'd you clean it? How'd you prep it for the? Uh, well, I normally go over with a piece of Scotch Brite and. Uh, Acetone. Okay. Because normally they have a oil residue on them, right? Yeah. I, I buy, I buy. There's different grades of sheet metal, so mm -hmm. I buy a, a nicer grade of sheet metal, so so it doesn't have you know like thick mill scale on it, but um, I buy a nicer grade, so. And in his past life, you can tell uh, uh, from the tattoos that Mike was a tattoo artist. So, uh, so he's very artistic and can uh, can draw just about anything, probably. Yeah. And really, what I thought I'd, we'd do here is just kind of show some some basic things that. Uh, that um, people might not know about how how things are developed and um, you know there's a lot of people out there who are interested in fabrication and they like me are uh, appreciate the fabrication but don't really necessarily know how it's done so um, I thought it'd be kind of neat to be able to come here and see an expert at work Any round will do. Yeah. It's like round in my corner. So. It's all specialty, uh, specialty tools yeah. of electrical tape. <laughs> Sharpies and electrical tape. <laughs> <laughs> Scratching that out so you don't make a mistake. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I would do that. <laughs> I would totally make a mistake. <laughs> so, all right. So we're ready to go to the bead roller now. Yeah, yeah. Ready to go to the bead roller. All right. We're gonna see if we can't make this into something cool. Cool. 
Okay, we are over at the uh, bead roller. <laughs> so say breaker, and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> And as you see, there's there's two different dies. There's one on the bottom there, and one on the top. And uh, you can change these dies, I assume. To, to, That's right. Yeah. 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 So this one's a, a step. This one's about a sixteenth step. Okay. The biggest uh, the biggest deal is uh, getting your pressure, and that for me is just by feel. Some guys count it. You know, I I don't really count it. Mm -hmm. I kind of just do it by feel. And that's that's what the uh, knob on the top right. is. Right, that's just a pressure pressure. pressure. You can see it's cutting into the metal there. Not cutting into the metal, but bending it. I think one of the the trickiest parts is uh, is figuring out which which lines you want to go which direction so if you turn it one way it'll make it go inward if you turn it the other way it'll make it go the opposite direction so the right. biggest part is figuring out which lines you want to do what as far as making it look more dimensional and making it stand out and by the way he's he's using a foot pedal here that uh, he can he that rolls it through <laughs> and uh, that that actually moves these wheels here, so he can apply extra pressure, less pressure to get that done. And you're lining that up with with the ridge with there. that ridge right yep. there um, and then the, you can adjust how far you want the bottom which gives it that 45 that bevel okay. um, you can make it tighter or further apart just depends on what you're doing What type of bead roller are you using here? Uh, this one's a, a Bailey bead roller. Bailey. Um, I like the Bailey. I do. I've used uh, I've used a few different kinds. Uh, I've used Miller Brothers. I've used all of them. Um, I just I prefer this machine. Mm -hmm. Now I haven't used any of the newer Miller Brothers. The one I used was. It was the older model, uh -huh. but uh, I bought this one, I don't know, five or six or so years ago. You used to do this by hand though, right? You yeah, I used to, uh, <laughs> well, I used to do it even more by hand than a hand roller, so um, before I found out that, that this was an actual thing, uh, I used to... Uh, I used to make pieces in my garage and I would put beading in them with a hammer and a chisel and a block of wood. Um, like making gas tank sides and stuff like that. A little shed. Yeah, because you, you, uh, um, did you build motorcycles or? or my, uh, my initial start into this, my whole goal was uh, building um, custom motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So I started out chopping up motorcycles and, uh, you know, whatever I could find. I yeah. chop up the dirt bikes, it didn't matter. But uh, then as I progressed, um, you know, I had buddies bringing cars over. Like, hey, can you change my tail light? <laughs> yeah, man. So, and then it 
somehow went from I was got well I got in the motorcycle world and decided that uh, it wasn't for me. <laughs> so it was a lot more corporate than I thought it was gonna be. Really? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't think that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't think that at all. Yeah, of course, I've no. never been in the motorcycle world. Yeah. I worked for uh, for Harley Davidson. They put memos in your check one one week that uh, they gave you exactly what was acceptable. Yeah, you only have these facial hairs to be acceptable. I was like, ah, you know, this is wrong for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the corporate thing. <laughs> so, huh. yeah. Sure enough. Definitely not where Harley Davidson started. No. <laughs> no, not at all. No, no, no. All right, so we're changing out the dies, and you're putting a skateboard. What are you doing? Yeah, that's a, that's a skateboard wheel. Um, you know, I was a, I was a skateboarder for, for a lot of years, so it kind of finds its way into just about everything I do. <laughs> So that makes it to where it's uh, it's rubbery um, and it's cushy, so it gives it a a certain effect that I like. So the upper is a is a tipping die. It's a basic tipping die. Now, of course, all the companies sell a rubber lower die, um, but for some reason, a lower a, a rubber lower die is stupidly expensive at any of the companies. Yeah, and you can just get you know. A, a decent wheel. sized skateboard wheel, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and that nah, works good then. Then you get uh, then you get four lower dies because they get sold in four <laughs> packs, right? So you get four lower dies for about thirty five dollars versus paying like a hundred and sixty dollars for one lower die. Yeah, another good tip for everybody out there. That's right. So what I'm doing now, I didn't really learn from anybody, um, to be honest with you. It was just uh, something that kind of I came up with one day, and uh, and it worked. I liked the way it worked. Um, so it, it gives it a, a whole nother three-dimensional feel when you do it this way. Um, so... This okay, so so you're doing what what you're doing is the the opposite. That's right. I flipped the piece over, and I'm doing it on the back side. Um, I got a rubber lower and a tipping die right here. Okay, and I'll really crank down on it on the back side, um, super super hard, and then normally I'll run it over it a couple of times to give it this effect that I like getting. So it's still pushing out the same way that the other one ish. Um, so you see this yeah. bevel here. So the stepping die creates this bevel. So this almost is like just drawing a line. Um, yeah. But since it's rubber, it allows it to, to force all of the metal. And the only real visible line is just the singular one. Okay. But uh, the effect that it gives you is is awesome there's a couple of different things that you can do with this depending on what you want to do so you can as you're running it you can tighten the die and it'll almost go from like a very subtle line to harder. Um, it'll make it a smoother transition. Or you can start off super tight, and then as you're running the line, you can uh, you can release some of the tension, and uh, it feathers it out. Mm. Which is what I'm about to do here. I did it against 
Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it starts making it come off of the metal. Yeah, stand out a little gives more. it way yeah, more three dimensional. This line yeah, here that line. and that line there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think you told us too when we were doing the class that um, for for certain pieces you actually will sh shrink the metal first, right? Yeah. Like sometimes that. I pre-stretch it. Um, sometimes it. Um, I shrink it. Really, just depends on the the piece that I'm doing. Um, I normally don't ever do it with uh, with art pieces. Yeah. Um, but if I if I'm making a you know, a piece for a car that has to fit and, and you know, it's very specific. Um, you wind up having to take a lot more time. So what you do is, is you, uh, you have to do test pieces to do it properly. So you do a, a test piece, you shrink, you stretch it so much, and then you run a bead through it, and you're basically testing to see what you need to stretch it for that particular bead or whatever you're going to put in. So this is basically like the first die that we use. It's step, um, okay. but they call these art dies. Um, what do they call them again? They call them art dies. Art dies? Art. A -R -T. Art. Okay. Yeah. Art, art dies. Nice. So uh, it's essentially the same thing. It just has a way, way, way thinner profile. Um, which makes it easier to get into tighter little nooks and crannies and do tighter radiuses. Are they always the same diameter? Uh, well, it depends. Um, if you have basically this basic, you know, the same, you know, common style of bead roller, uh -huh. then yeah, they're, they're this diameter. And that's the same across the board. So this is a Bailey machine bead. Um, you can run... Um, Miller Brothers dies in it. Um, as long as the only thing you see in variation is the inside. So that's like three quarter, um, but you'll see seven eighths inner diameters. But as long as the inside diameter is the same, the outside is normally the same, unless you get a deep throat bead roller, and then those dies are drastically really big. big. I went to this auction, you know, that was kind of you know, wine tasting, that type, that type <laughs> of deal. And uh, this guy was there, and it was a silent auction, and he was like, I'm getting that. And he, uh, he was kind of in a bid war with a couple of people that wanted it also. Yeah. And he won it. And uh, I guess his dad was uh, had passed away. His dad was in the Navy. And uh, that was one of my favorite pieces, just oh, because cool. he was so stoked about it, you know? Yeah. You can see he's got this cranked down pretty good. It's got a yeah. it's got an extra line. Yeah, it's got a double there, but, line. Uh, but we're on the back side, so that's right. Doesn't matter. always start and stop my lines just before after the bend so you can so I can I can so run you back and in work into it. into it yeah yeah
So I always use a dirty scotch brite pad so you can see the uh, detail that comes out. <laughs> That's right. Get over here in the light. There we go. There we go. There's the finished piece. You can really see how how well it stands out in the details up top here. Very three-dimensional. Two-dimensional, I guess. <laughs> right. I know I don't know what dimension I'm in. But uh, <laughs> very nice piece. Turn it uh, back and forth a little bit. There you go, so you can kind of see there. And that is how B rolling is done. So, uh, Mike, thank you so much for showing yes, us. Sir. Yes, sir. And um, how is it? Along. Mike Abbott <laughs> with uh, Steel Rose uh, Metal Company here in Memphis. So, uh, look him up on Facebook. He's got a Facebook page. And uh, are you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, he's on Instagram as well. So, uh, look him up. And uh, we'll probably be doing some stuff here in the future. We're going to uh, see what else he has laying around uh, to do. I think uh, uh, English wheel. Yeah, yeah. English wheel over there, some welding, some stuff like that. So, sure. so yeah. Well, we appreciate you uh, taking the time and yes, sir. I appreciate it. I need to know.